Back inside Artesian Football with the head coach Fred Cutriff and coach, uh, we touched on it just a little bit that not only is the varsity starting to roll, the JV and reserves um, or JV and freshmen really continuing to roll. They've had uh, very successful seasons this year and um, have played very well, wrapped up their regular seasons this weekend. Uh, freshmen finished eight and one, and you know we don't really have an award for it, but they're they're mid-state champs. Their only loss coming to uh, Ron Colley, uh, and that was uh, you know a game they could have you know could have won, but they didn't. But uh, they finished strong. Got some good young talent, we believe. With you know again they got to get in the weight room, they got to develop. Um, you know we don't want. Hopefully it's not uh, eight and one's not going to be their their highlight of their their career, but uh, they were really fun. And uh, I tell you, Johnny Elliott. Uh, as a head freshman coach, does a great job getting these kids ready to play at the next level. And then you throw uh, Eric Broomball in there, who, who teaches here and, and is our line coach. Uh, been really pleased with him. And we've had Luke Moskrip come back and join us, also teaches, had a good time, did a good job working with our defensive uh, line. Uh, just got a great staff there and, and gets them ready. And then our JV, uh, they finished 7 and 2, had a big win. And you really don't realize, uh, you know, they were really good at the beginning of the year. And uh, you know they were really clocking up some points and stuffing people, and all of a sudden uh, we lose uh, we, we lose a quarterback, and we take about four or five of their players right. and bump them up, and now all of a sudden it's just not quite the same. But those young kids responded. Uh, There's like the next man up mentality. They done it just as well as the varsity did. Uh, they've stepped up, and I said we got beat 20 to 14 by Whiteland, and a game we probably just didn't show up the first half. But other than that, and and it got beat by Ron Colley. But uh, they've been in some tight games, but uh, really appreciate the kids' efforts and uh, finish 7-2. And technically, they're, they're, they would be mid-state chance, but, uh, you know, there's, like I said, there's no award. But I know the kids think about it. And, and what's good about it is, is it leads into a good offseason. Kids feel good about themselves. They're used to winning. You know, our freshmen JV now have won for three straight years. Around. Winning is just breeds winning. Uh, and I think a lot of that has to do with our success late in the year here. I know we start off 0-4. But our kids just are not used to losing. I know that kind of was a mentality before, but uh, they don't believe in it. Uh, they don't. They don't try to do it, of course. And uh, so that's why I think it's important. But again, it's just it's just a part of the program. Uh, the ultimate goal is to win at the varsity level. As you look at that, the freshman and reserve. What are you guys trying to do? What are you trying to get out of these kids at the freshman? Uh, and reserve level. I know you talked about getting them ready for the next level, so that's got to be priority one, I'm sure. Well, uh, with JV, you're looking at our top priority is to play the play our sophomores, and then JV fill in uh, with 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 the juniors, of course. Uh, big some of those guys were looking at you know next year. I told them at the end of the, the JV at the end of the season, okay, yeah, your your season's not over. They got to come out. The skits. This I think it's the toughest year, especially when you're a sophomore uh, playing JV because you want to play varsity. Uh, you sometimes think the coaches don't notice you, but what we do, and we probably got to do a better job of making them understand that. But they got to come out every week, and they get—they really kind of get pounded at times. They're the scout team. Uh, we start. We come out tonight. We're going to get a group ready, and they're going to run Whiteland's offense. And so the JV's tough because they don't get a chance to work on on the timing and 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 the things that they need to as far as our offense and defense because they're being the other team, and that's kind of tough. Freshmen, on the other hand, they get better. They learn our system. You know, we teach it to a certain point at at, at, at junior highs, but they really learn our our terminology, how we do things. And now we're really getting them ready, and, and some of them probably, you know, we, right, right now we're playing four sophomores that, and, you know, that, that have bumped up that are that are starting for us. So, uh, and we want them to have fun, and then hopefully you throw in uh, uh, learning a little bit about character and, and never quitting, and throw those little things in, and hopefully you can build a good football program. Trying to continue to build a good football program, and then they'll have the annual East-West battle will be coming up on a Tuesday night as well, and so that's another opportunity to be able to get out there and see it again. Not necessarily about wins and losses, it's about getting those kids ready and getting them ready to play at the next level. Well, we've had, uh, you know, we started this last year. We practice East and West together on Mondays. They all come over here, and our varsity coaches, JV coaches, all work with them. Uh, and then uh, on Saturdays, they go over to, to West and practice together on Saturday mornings. Uh, it's real tough because we're the, we're the only school in the mid state that has two junior highs. So when you go to play them, you know, you're playing a team usually twice the size of you. Right. And so we always want the kids to realize, hey, there's 50 of us really here, and we're not as bad as we think. Yeah. And we hopefully that rub has rubbed off. I know we got some good football players coming, and we just got it's we got to keep them motivated and keep them into it. And uh, I, uh, I, you know, I, I like what I see in for the future. Martinsville's future, though immediate future, coming up is Friday night. It's the round number one of sectional play. It's against a familiar opponent, the Whiteland Warriors. We'll take a break. 
We'll come back and preview it when Inside Artesian Football continues. Artesian Outdoors, the Bass Pro Shop on State Road 37 next to 84 Lumber. Inside you'll find a shop crammed full with all your hunting and fishing needs. Artesian Outdoors, the Bass Pro Shop, carries a full line of archery and hunting supplies of all types. And they have a giant selection of tackle, live bait, and fishing gear. And catalog ordering is also available every Monday. For all your hunting and fishing needs, stop by Artesian Outdoors, the Bass Pro Shop, on State Road 37, next to 84 Lumber, behind O'Neill Mulch. Shop at Keller's Office Supply at 159 North Main Street in Martinsville for all your school and office supply needs. When you come to Keller's, you'll find superstore prices with a hometown service. Keller's has a wide variety of supplies from paper clips to office furniture. They also have a large selection of printer cartridges to choose from. Keller's offers same-day delivery for all your office and janitorial needs. And if they don't have your supplies in stock, they can deliver it to you the next day. Keller's is a proud sponsor of the Martinsville community. Come to Keller's. We'll teach you like family. Five, five dollar, five dollar foot long. Five, five dollar, five dollar, five dollar foot long. Five, five dollar, five dollar foot long. Come into Martinsville Subway and enjoy a five dollar foot long today. Back inside Artesian football, Martinsville ready for sectional play coming up on Friday night. It's fall break week for the Artesians. It always is that first round of sectional play. Martinsville will go to school two times uh, this week on a Monday and Tuesday. Teachers go Wednesday. Everybody's off Thursday and Friday. So that takes a little bit of a different approach. How do you guys attack the week in terms of practice? Well, we haven't done it very well the last few years. Uh, but... Uh, it is a little bit different, but uh, Whiteland's going to be on fall break, so we can't use that as an excuse. Uh, we'll practice at the same time. Uh, we'll come in at 3 o'clock, 2.30, do our practice on Wednesday, Thursday, and then uh, you know, we'll, on, on uh, Friday morning we'll get everybody up, come in, watch a little bit of tape, and then we'll have a team dinner. It's probably spaghetti around 3, 2.30, and get ready to play a football game. So we, we can't worry about what we've done in the past. Uh, we got to come out. Whiteland's a good football team. I know we got them last time, but uh, everybody reminds me that two yep. years ago we got them, and then they come back and they spanked us pretty good. And I, I know our kids think about that a lot. I know our coaches do. So we're going to go out and uh, you know, it's, you know, we, I don't think our team's going to play tensed up. We're going to go out, and this team likes to go out and have fun. And uh, so we'll let things happen, and, and whatever it is, we'll leave it all on the field. Leave it on the field. It's something that trying to get that first sectional win in quite some time. Uh, for Martin, you haven't had a home game here since 2003, so it's going to be finally nice to be able to uh, not have to get on the bus and drive anywhere to battle Whiteland. But like you said, it's the second time around to play the Warriors. What are some of the problems that that presents in terms of being able to see a team now twice uh, in the year? Well, I know they're looking at, we're not going to change a whole lot what we did. I mean, it is, and I know they're not either. Uh, but uh, they run a very, it's, it's us, it's like a triple option. They're, it's called their fly offense. We've talked about it before. Uh, they got their fly, their, their, their motion, which you're going to give it to them. They can give it to the fullback on a trap or a basically dive, depending on what they call, or the quarterback keeps it. Uh, you throw the passing game in there a little bit. I thought we did a good job against that. They tried to pass, and our, you know, we really were on it. But um, Coach Fisher does a great job. I'm sure we have a few more different wrinkles. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're going you know, to run our defense. And, uh, uh, you know, I imagine they've got, I know they've already made some changes from like when they first played us. Uh, some of their defensive linemen aren't the same. They got the big kid that's going to, I believe, Mississippi, Mississippi State. State. He's now playing a lot of defense. So uh, I imagine they're going to try to get a little bit movement and want to dominate that line of scrimmage. Um, so uh, we, we know what we're going to see. And offensive side is, you know, we're, we're going to do the same thing we've been doing. We're, I thought we've been very balanced. Uh, we're, we're now a running football team, even though Hayden's throwing it great. Uh, we still, I forget what we threw for, just under 200 yards. Yep. The buck seventy, and then uh, uh, we ran for over three hundred. Yeah. So you know we're we're going to want to establish the run, and then if we can't, then we'll go there. But uh, so that'll be, that'll be what we're looking to do. Let's talk a little bit about them. You mentioned it offensively. We saw them a couple of weeks ago um, over there at Whiteland, but uh, offensively they run what you said that uh, fly offense. Some things maybe you've noticed in the past couple of weeks, though maybe that they've changed or. What can we expect out of them on Friday night offensively? Well, I think they're doing, a, you know, their line's getting better. Uh, they, they do a good job. And, uh, you know, when you do the same thing over and over, 
uh, the kids you become a habit, and, and they've got some good running backs. Their quarterback's very effective. Uh, we we kind of contained him a little bit last time, but he's dangerous. Uh, uh, Harris, number 37, is, is, their, is their tailback, fullback type, I guess be the, their tailback. Uh, he's probably the, might be the best back we've, we'll see. I mean, he's good, and he's only a junior. And then they've they put a look like a sophomore in there running more of their their jet motion number three instead of number five. But uh, and, and they got some good kids in there, and their line gets out and gets on people. So I think they're playing a lot more physical than they did back two or three weeks ago. So it's going to be a concern of ours. You mentioned on the defensive side, they've changed some of their defensive linemen around. They bring the big fella. He's going to be hard to miss on the defensive front. But what can we expect out of them defensively on Friday night? Well, they've we've seen anywhere from a, a three four look, which three down linemen. Uh, to uh, to put in four. Uh, when when we when we passed it quite a bit, they they've gone to the three. Uh, you know, it's no secret they know we're going to try to run the football. So I look to see a lot of four, and then if they can get us in a down a bad down and distance situation, you'll see that three man front um, and dropping those guys off. And we've seen cover three out of them. We've seen cover four. So uh, you know, we've just got to you know. Uh, we've seen some different techniques up front too, where we call we we number where guys line up, like a one and a three or a two and a two, which would be head up over our guards. So we'll work those different combinations a little bit, because when we pull, it does affect who we trap and what what they're lined up. But um, you know we're we're gonna you know practice what we've seen on them and what they've done to us earlier, and that's what we're gonna go with. What do you guys have to do offensively, defensively? Keys to the game to come out with the uh, big sectional win, and that's what it's all about get the win, move on, and uh, get into round number two? We've got to slow them down. Um, they're going to get some big plays. We're going to bend a little bit, but we've got to hang together, slow them down, get off the field. You know, in third down conversions, we've got to get off the field uh, because at offenses, they're very good. They, can, it's, it's, they don't like to pass it, but they can score quickly. I mean, it's, it's a good offense, and they got some kids that do a good job with it. On the, defense, on the offensive side, We've got to do just what we did over there before. We've got to score. And, you know, we did it at, at, at Plainfield. We've got to move the chains. That's what we talk about. We're not looking for that big play. We want to move the chains and come up with our, our, our next play and get ready to execute. Um, if we do those things, it's, going to be, it's still going to be a heck of a game, but we feel we could be successful. All right, Coach, appreciate you joining us. Uh, have a good week of practice. We'll see you out there on Friday. Thanks. It's Artesian head coach Fred Cutcher here inside Artesian Football Martinsville. We'll Finally get a sectional game at home. It's the first time since 2003 when they battled the Brownsburg Bulldogs. So uh, the Artesians finally get to host a sectional game. It's a familiar opponent. The Warriors from Whiteland come to town to battle the Artesians. I'd like to thank the coach, as always, for taking time to come in. For the head coach, Fred Cutriff, along with Carl Van Dievender, who produced it, I'm Eric Meyer. We'll see you again next time inside Artesian Football.